GT engine are internal, so you can't see them. But that dual air box with the dual throttle body that allows that freer breathing, which allows the engine to be able to generate more of that horsepower in the calibration. You know, that dual snout on your horse, your forward facing horse, kind of a dual snout for the air. When a horse runs, that horse comes in, he has to breathe, she has to breathe, and those nostrils expand, bring the air in, same kind of concept. But it, we really think that it is represents that forward-facing horse and the dark horse and that power, 100 horsepower per liter that we wanted to derive from it. It is a unique front from each GT, EcoBoost, and dark horse. So this one, lighter radiator, axle cooler, engine oil cooler, tranny cooler. You know, it, it is like the pinnacle of the track performing vehicles that we have done on the five liter, you know, on the five liter engine, on the base Mustang. Like, not on the Ford Performance, not the Carl's team stuff, but the base Mustang, far and above the pinnacle of performance that we've done off of it. And a lot of the internals from the GT500 brought in. So that's what gets us from the 486 to the 500 from the GT, GT Active Exhaust to the to the Dark Horse itself. Dark Horse, the thing you didn't see coming, and we there was there was a lot of discussion over what this was gonna be named. And a lot of times people hanging up on each other and, and maybe um, saying some untoward things um, because you know bringing out a new name is for the first one in 21 years not unlike changing the dual eyebrows on the internal there you know there's a lot of passion amongst the team um and so we ended up with the dark horse uh specifically because it was the thing you didn't see coming right which is that the, the new one and the studio and joel um the north american design director and chris and i mean every like the Ford family, I mean, like everybody who you know, has an opinion on it. Um, and we ended up with this with the forward facing head. First one we've done that's not left to right pony on there um, to represent something coming forward that didn't see coming, right? So if you think of the generational, we didn't want it to be looking backwards, like Mach 1, you know, you call it something different. Um, you know, high Country Special, old Twister Edition, the old Blue Bonnet Edition from Texas. Like, didn't want that. And it had to, it had to speak to performance as well. Um, this isn't a Ford Performance Drive vehicle. It's Mustang T. So not unlike Mach 1, Bullet, Boss 302, those aren't, you don't see a Ford Performance badge on this, right? So to develop it as the pinnacle of performance, that had to live up with it, with the naming associated with it. Um, and, and we really feel that it did. Um, the, this one that you see here is the appearance package. The blue ember is the only, the only can get the blue ember on the dark horse and only on the dark horse appearance package. Um, and you can get two other colors on the, the appearance package, but this is exclusive to it. So this is not like Mystic or Mystichrome, if you remember the, the colors that flipped. Like it cost $5,000 a gallon. Like you have to call into the SVT hotline to actually get the, to get the paint replacement on it. It is the same concept right with that bronze coloring in the blue. There, there are two unique separate screens, right? But what we did is with this plastic and magnesium, we connected the two screens. And what you're able to do with the Mustang mode, they tie the two together. So as you're changing stuff here, it represents itself here, right? So it like kind of connects you with the interface from a like a performance close at hand and like a cockpit orientation. So you can literally spin the vehicle. It's generating the image as it's doing it. You can go up and you know put the nose down and circle it around and over there. And then you can go from your custom modes. So you know before we had the one Mustang mode. Right, you're going through the mode switch and go to the one Mustang mode that you set up and save. And now we have six of them that you can personalize. Again, not something you need to have in a car, but allows you then to personalize that performance aspect of it. So you can change your appearance and personalize it. Then you can do your ambient lighting. It's not liking my ambient lighting right now.
so you can change your ambient lighting associated with it. Then you can go to cluster themes. And the first one is match your drive mode, so it'll change your screen as it relates to it. I have no idea why we put a calm one in there. Calm is the last thing I want to feel as I'm driving. It really clears off everything other than your speed up and your RPMs. Then you have your normal mode. Right? And so you can see it, what it represents here and then what it's going to change to here. And then you have your sport mode that is more about, obviously a little bit more about RPM and speed. Right? You have those individually here going up the sides. Um, and then the track mode, which looks an awful lot like the Gen 6 version of the track mode. Um, but you can then set your RPMs, then you can also set your shift points, and you can set your shift points to be visually here or to pop up there from a lighting perspective. And then, if you still wanted to give a nod back to it, you can go back to the old box body that has the actual white and then that hideous green color that was in there, the old LED green, so at night it pops up as the green.